Hey guys, this is Those Guys, with your host, Matt Marrero, along with your other host. So Tish Ryman, that was the extended version, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, we'll be and playing that as our ending short. as well. Yes, well, well I, okay. So, so yeah, I'm sure you want our opening to be three minutes long, uh, which would be no, around the same I opening. Don't. That I don't. I just would laugh have. because yeah. I heard it, and I'm like, that's the extended version. And that's how yes, much of a dork course. I am. That's how much no, of a dork of I am. Well, because it would have ended right there, but it just immediately went on, and you're like, hold on a second. Because, yeah, we were, we're going to play it as our opening and our ending. Usually we play the songs from the games as our opening. But recently the game's openings have just gotten longer and longer and longer. And today we're talking about Heart Gold and Soul Silver. But it's really funny how the game's entrances, and when I say gotten longer, or the openings, and you're like, well, how long, Matt? Our original opening, about 30 seconds. It could work for a podcast. And they slowly got a bit longer and longer. And that's fine, you know, a minute long, okay. Uh, Soul Silver. Is two minutes and twenty five seconds. Look that up. Two minutes. Now that's not a that's not a problem in any way. But having to cut that up and put that as an opening for the show, it's just no, no, not happening. No, you know we're playing the full thing. It's just really funny, especially looking at these openings. And it's just Matt, play the game now. I can't. I saw the movie. I'm good. <laughs> I'm pretty good. I've seen the movie. I don't know if I need to play the game. I'll I'll come back to it soon. I have other movies to watch. Maybe the kids, that's a movie. I mean, think about how long Vines are. So the kids, that must be like a year to them. Yeah, Vines are what, seven seconds max? Six seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the, the technology, just technology-dominated world, huh? I wonder I wonder if kids, you know, some maybe some teenagers, but mostly just kids, after six-second Vines... Look at our hour-long podcasts. Our raw podcasts are two hours. Two go, hours. That's a lifespan. Yeah, our raws are two hours. And it's just, that's a lifespan. Someone lived and died in that time. It was only two hours. Well, when you think about what? it that way, man, seriously, man, I mean, six seconds to two hours, right? And now yeah. <laughs> the opening must have been difficult for them to watch, even though this is the most glorious, in my opinion, this is the best Pokemon game that has ever been made, so... Right. Oh, yes. No, um, we'll get into it just in a second before we really, really get into, you know, the game itself, well, our personal experiences and then, you know, some behind-the-scenes stuff in the game. I would like to mention our call-in number being 718-664-9468. You can use it to call into the show uh, to just, you know, talk about the game. I mean, if you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, this is my favorite game. Here's why, or you're thinking, man, I really did not like this game, actually. I either like the original more, or it just wasn't the strongest in the gen. Hey, you know, call in to talk about that, too, if you want. Uh, maybe favorite Pokemon, you know, uh, whatever you want to talk about in realms of this is the, you know, this game versus other games, or, you know, things like that. Call in, 718-664-9468. And Satish, what else can they do with our call-in number? Yeah, well, if you're not calling in to jump on the air with us, you can always use that number, 718-664-9468, as a way to listen to us. Alternatively, if your Internet is unavailable or just laggy at the moment, you can't blast us through your computer, you can call into that number just to listen to us. Yes, uh, 718-664-9468. And I laugh really hard because whenever I say, what else can they do with our call a number? I feel like you're just going to have a, a, a bad guy kind of turn where it's just the Tish turns evil. They can shove it. The Tish, no. What every single say? time. I'm, but not every today. single time. Every, no, but every single time I'm just, and what else can they do with our number? They can go to hell with it's it. It's nice that you trust me with it, though. Yeah, I do. Well, I mean, you know, we've known each other for so long, and I, I yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's also, I can mute you, but like yeah. That. Worst case scenario, I can mute him and destroy his reign of evil tyranny. I can mute you, too. That's a scary thing, where good can also be triumphed by evil in that case. But let's bring up this Pokemon game. Let's actually get to some kind of Go order, it, I guess. Yeah. Order? Why not? Uh, I really enjoyed this game. Because, you know, of course, I'm a huge fan of Pokemon Crystal. As many of you know, if you've been kind of listening to the podcasts, I was a huge fan of Crystal. Uh, and getting into this game, I thought, okay, well, what am I... Because for some strange reason, I don't know why, but the idea didn't strike me that, Matt, everything's getting updated. It was like, yeah, I know, I'm playing a new game. Matt, 
everything's getting updated. And I don't know why. Maybe because Fire Red has become such a big part of, you know, my memory that Fire Red doesn't seem like it's like, dude, everything got revamped, everything's updated, everything's different. So it was kind of silly, I think, to assume that if I'm playing Heart Gold and Soul Silver, that it's not just a complete, you know, like basically diamond graphics with a whole bunch of other stuff that it's just like, oh, hey, you know, you have a phone now, but it's different, you know. Uh, I was, you know, the idea of, damn it, I can't store all these numbers. You can now. Damn it, I just want to, you know, I want to like, go to the PC and talk to Professor Oak and see how my Pokedex is doing. Why do that when you can just call him? It's like, oh, well, shit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, okay. Silver, gold, crystal, my favorite games ever. Uh, being someone who grew up in early Pokemon, you know, it was very significant right. for me that they in Generation 2 were able to directly connect it to Generation 1, where it was like, mm-hmm. so this is new, but we're not going to take back the stuff that you really liked. Don't worry. And yes, it isn't so like, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry. It isn't like, which I'm still going to, which you know, I will be getting to, although I might not be even beyond this podcast that we do in the future, Black 1 and Black 2, you know, White 1, White 2, where that was literally just direct sequel. Where Crystal, arguably, you can jump in and just go, Team Rocket, those guys from the anime, right, they were disbanded in this game, okay, cool, and they're legends, okay, cool. But So it isn't a direct, I mean, there's references, but it isn't like, you are the same man you once were. Where from what I've heard from you, you're basically the same person from transitioning from Black 1 to Black 2? Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. So that was also interesting as well, where it was their way of going, it's like, you know, uh, having a sequel, but it really isn't. You know, things have progressed in this world, but, you know, usually movies don't, you know, or TV shows, they do spinoffs, yes, but they don't necessarily do consider it a sequel when the main character is not there. Yeah, it's one of these things where I don't know if you want to call it a sequel or something like that, but... Spin off works very well. You know, because for me, it's just a revamp, you know, because it's, and I loved it, because, all right, so not everything was perfect because nostalgia, to be honest with you, because, excuse me, there's a matter of, like, the music sounds different on the DS, of course, and while that's kind of good in some cases, uh, some people preferred the original 8-bit sound, and I understand that. And what was cool is that you even had something that they tried to put in for people like that with the Game Boy Sound. But there was so much that they did right in terms of this remake where it felt like they improved on everything they could have and everything that worked, they left it the same. Right. Right. Yes, there was a lot of cool things I think that they did with this game where you know, I mentioned the idea. Of, oh, by the way, another thing is that uh, something really cool, is that I, okay, so I love Crystal, right? But I would like to argue, and you can argue against me if you want, 718-664-9468, but I would like to argue that the game didn't really have much of a quote-unquote story. It was extremely fun. It added a lot of cool elements, and, you know, of course, uh, added a lot of stuff from the, you know, the older games. But, you know, Crystal, it was kind of just, okay, you're fighting Team Rocket again. They're still back. But I don't feel like it was there. You know, there was a lot of overarching stuff involved, in my opinion, right? There was some cool little stuff thrown in here and there, but for some reason I feel like it was just, you know, not just you're playing the game, because, again, I love this game. But when you look at Heart Cold Soul Silver, it feels like they wanted to add in stuff to make you go, it's, you know, you're not just playing Crystal again, or, you know, or Silver or Gold. Not that that's a bad thing because of all the, you know, stuff that they added in, but they wanted to make sure. It's like, listen, now you have Lyra coming in. Now you have the Kimono Girls playing a bigger part in this, you know, in this entire game. And, of course, the idea that you can get Pokemon like Arceus and Dialga, Palkia. You know, you're sitting there and you're like, whoa, this is, whoa, right? Like, this is actually a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's some of the stuff, you know, I don't particularly 100% remember. And it's just because they added things. When you said the Kimono Girls having a bigger part, I immediately was like, oh, my God, that's right, they did. Because, you know, <laughs> yes, I, I yes, they had a, a second, you know. It's fine, it's fine. Well, because, you know, you think about the original, and they didn't. 
So, and, and right. of course, you know, so I can understand your, you know, your confusion. But, yeah, no, the, the Kimono Girls play a bigger role. And, and you know, and there's a lot of, I mean, uh, cool, interesting stuff added to this. I always keep on saying that same phrase over and over and over again. My right. put on no, a but I get it. But because it's true. we were both like, man, this was yeah. cool. It really was. Because, you know, and I think, we do that a lot. Dude, that right. was so cool. I, <laughs> yeah. No, but I think something very interesting that, that was added that I don't, I don't know if it was added to later games. I'm, I, I, again, I have not played – only when I played it X, and I can't even remember this happening in X. The idea of a Pokemon – Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon uh, following you. Yeah, that was a really – okay. That was just a really awesome thing about this, Jay. Is it, where, is it exclusive to this game? Yeah, it is, essentially. I mean, that's, well, outside that's of upsetting. the Pikachu – Right. Well, yeah, obviously, but you know what I mean. The idea of a a a lot of Pokemon being able to not only here's the thing, the things that they can do are amazing. Because first off, they can follow you, right? So you're just like, well, yeah, duh. You know, you can talk to them and see their moods. Oh, duh, duh, right? But where it gets interesting is first off, weather affecting it. Where if you're out in the rain and you're talking to your Cyndaquil, it's like, dude. It's raining out here, man. And it's it's not saying, like, it's close to dying because of your incompetence, right? Which is what I first mm-hmm. thought was going to tell me. But it was still just like, Cyndaquil is surprised at the rain. You know, like, dude. And then you might throw out, let's say, like, uh, Belossum. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bellsprout. But, I mean, hey, Belossum, too. And it could just be like, it is happy to be in the rain. And you're like, ah, ah. You know, so that... That's the first thing. The second thing is, you didn't know this, Satish. I don't know why, but I mean, it's been a while for you. Um, the idea that if you have a shiny Pokemon, there is now a shiny sprite following you. So they not only made sprites for every single Pokemon in the game to be following your main character, but they also added the ability for it to be shiny if you caught that shiny Pokemon. Because instead of just loading the same thing again, or instead of just saying error, error, and making your game explode, any Pokemon that you catch that is shiny, it will now be shiny behind you. If it's, you know, the first in your party. I find that extremely fascinating. Which I thought was cool, because it didn't come up to me that often, or maybe Pokemon that I had following me were shiny, but I wasn't looking for it. Right. But it made me happy when you told me. I was like, wow. You know, that's dedication. And I think that's why they probably didn't release it in other games because the ability that, okay, in something like RPG Maker, that's a fairly easy script in the sense that, you know, you can have four people following you. It's just a, it's just a general walk script. I mean, Final Fantasy and a lot of other games have those general walking scripts. So it's not hard to do. But what I think is hard to do is the idea that they have to, first off, make one for every single game. Where when they add new Pokemon, then they have to add new 3D models. That's one. Mm-hmm. Two, having to now import these from one game to the next. That's, you know, even though they always import the old data into the newer games, which we'll talk about a bit later, as we right. usually do when we go b- a bit behind the scenes, still having to import all these Pokemon now into the new game and then give them the function to be able to follow your character, which again, it's like, oh, well, that's normal. But. Uh, you know, a few of the things they did in the game, to me at least, for a handheld game that isn't going to be, it's obviously hackable, but isn't going to be done like, let's say, RPG Maker, where they make it to be hackable. I mean, you can easily just open up mm-hmm. an RPG Maker game, and if you know what you're doing, you know, take that person's sprites out, tweak their scripts, and things like that. But in this, in a game like this, you know, it's just to, you know, to not only have the Pokemon be following you, but you end up going, let's say, Nurse Joy. And they're like, please, take my Pokemon. Okay. Pops in the Pokeball. Gets put into, you know, gets healed, whatever. You walk away, and then the Pokemon poofs out right back behind you. The, the idea that when you do HMs, the Pokemon will, okay, like if you have, a, if you have your Geodude out, and your Geodude knows Rock Smash, and you're just like, Geodude, use Rock Smash. It will get in front of you and will smash the rock for you. Mm-hmm. That is mind-blowing to me. And, you know, Maybe to some of our younger fans. No, Not but so to much, put that in perspective. But, because, right. you know, as someone who worked on a, a hack for Pokemon Black at the time. Now, mm. 
you have to sit there and think every direction that it has to turn is mm-hmm. a new sprite. So just very quickly, right, 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 right. at the time, we're into fourth gen. So that's like nearly 500 Pokemon. So nearly 500 Pokemon, at least four sprites per. Then you need to consider right. that doubled for shinies. Then you need to consider the sprites for well, animations of HMs. Right. And also, the Shinies, while they aren't that big of an issue, because you know how the Shinies are going to look from the older Pokemon, so so Soul Silver, technically they were lucky. But with something like Black 1, they probably laughed if someone brought up the idea. Because now you have to, you're making new Pokemon, 1. 2, you are now having to 3D them. Three, you are then having to use your shiny, because again, shiny recoloring isn't the issue, but it's now doing new shiny recoloring, if you, if you will. Because let's say you're, you know, a shiny Geodude. Shiny Geodude's been around for a while. You know, they know mm-hmm. that shiny Geodude will be gold. So it's not that hard to go. You are now 3D in gold, if you were 3D before. But the idea where it's just, okay, so, you know, we're trying to make these new Pokemon. We're trying to... You know, know how to make them shiny. What shiny yeah, were they? I see your and point. then adding in 3D, and then 3D recoloring, and then, yeah, like you mentioned, now any new TMs, I'm sorry, any new HMs have to be worked into this. And you're sitting there, and it's just, again, maybe like in the board meeting, I'm sure that, you know, at first Game Freak, you know, it was just, oh, yeah, we did this for this game. It was really, really nice. Now, what about the next game? And then they all, and other than one guy, they all just laughed. No, no, no. That was. That was an exclusive thing. Let's not even, let's not even fucking go there. Mm-hmm. Because it's just how can you after that, you know, after that game where at least that game had the opportunity, if you will, to be a remake to include, uh, you know, the po- to include new Pokemon, but only new to the heart, you know, to the gold and silver section of you know our, our, of us where we're just like oh these are new Pokemon for this game but really they aren't because they've been around in Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Ruby, Emerald, Sapphire so they're not new so you know so you think about it to us we're like oh that's new but to them they've been around for a while you know the people who created the game they made them a while ago so it's a bit easier I think to do that with this game compared to Black 1 and 2 where it's just Mm-mm. Maybe two, they would have had the opportunity to try that out, but not for one at all. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with what you're saying, and it just, but it still makes me think about the ridiculous amount of effort because. Oh yeah. They, you know, and I mean, all right, yes, they're a big company. They've got big sprite artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's still just a crazy amount of effort, and I think what was great is that it's it was really pre- appreciated where people honestly looked at it and thought, this is awesome, and made use of it. Where even if it was like I was telling you, I was making jokes, where it's like, yep, Waylord led my party, just because. But Right, 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 right. You know, yeah. there's a lot and of also, stuff. And that's just one little facet of the game. Right, and, and something we didn't mention, by the way, uh, I, or maybe you did, and I'm sorry if I didn't catch it, all of the messages designed, where many of them are generic, but mm-hmm. some of them are, aren't. Like some of them, like I assume, I assume if there's Mewtwo behind you, you're not going to turn around and it's going to give you the nice cutesy face. And Mewtwo is happy to be with you, you know. Mewtwo, Mewtwo decided. Is kowa- <laughs> mushy mushy, yeah. Mewtwo desu ne. I know, yeah. Mewtwo desu, hi. <laughs> Mewtwo. That just wouldn't work. No, so I'm sure it's just Mewtwo is wary of your presence. Like you click A too many times, Mewtwo has picked you up. <laughs> like, you just levitate, you levitate, Mewtwo has picked you up. Mewtwo has had enough of your shit. Which, by the way, right, that's a weird segue, but I, I think it works in my head. Uh, speaking of these sprites, you know, uh, we talked about the idea that Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, we talked about this last uh, show, where we said, damn, or I said, damn, this must have really revolutionized or really kind of took people back from the idea of Pokemon hacking. Right? Maybe now it's better because now we have, you know, 3D model this and 3D model that. I mean, I can personally make a 3D model house and print it out on a 3D printer. That so, makes you really happy, right? You because have no fucking the, idea. You have no second, fucking idea. I, you know, I need to tell you guys this, uh, whoever's okay, out there listening, do. because right. our, our school has a 3D printer. And yeah, our, our college has a 3D printer. Okay. Yeah. So the, the second that I informed Matt that we had one, he immediately was like, 
Really? Because I, I think I said verbatim. Oh yeah, we were printing little houses with it. Because and I and, and, we and, and, were and I asked you printing little houses because, with it. Because because I asked you, I said, oh, what does that mean necessarily? And when I got to see it today, and I got to see, you know, I didn't really see it work, but I got to see the houses that came up from it. You know, my ideas all formed into one, and I and I realized we can have Godzilla slash. You know, uh, Power Rangers slash Super Sentai slash Com- well, not Common Rider necessarily unless you're Common Rider J slash Ultraman Ha-ha. battle, battle. Ha ha. Yes, you know, very, barely knows of Common Rider this man, but he knows a good J when he sees one. So you know, we we are, unless of course it's ZO, in which case you're fucked. But anyway, yeah. um, yeah, so uh, uh, hopefully some of you got that. But anyway. So the you know we can have a monster fight is the point, and by monster fight I mean Satish and I being quote-unquote giants in a very small city because of 3D printing. And the idea, by the way, that it's just, hey, just go on this website and you can make the 3D, you know, I, where I feel like back in, and maybe I'm wrong here, but back when the games first came out, it wasn't so easy, easy to just make these 3D things without be, no, you know, knowing shit. Where now it's just, I can make a 3D house. And it's just like, wait, in my head I think I could import this into Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, let's say. Right, but back yeah. when these games first came out, right. Mm. So jumping back to the past, right. Jump back when these games first came out, specifically now referring to Harkold and Soul Silver. Did this not? I mean, just take all of the hackers and just, I mean, kick kick you right in the ass. Yeah, no, it, it's fun because there's also okay. So in the new Kirby Triple Deluxe, in the last level of the game, when you finish right. it. There's a banner that shows the original Kirby to the Kirby you're playing with in the 3DS game. And <laughs> it's one of those things that makes you realize, like, we had a flat 2D black and white Kirby. And you think back mm-hmm. to Pokemon, I mean, hey, it was the Game Boy Color, but we had a flat 2D, essentially, um, right. small, like, barely colored character. And now we've switched to, at least, even in Hardball So Silver, just full 3D, just vibrant color. The buildings are shooting out. And it just. You know, it was cool for me because, okay, and I think I've mentioned this before, uh, Hercule Soul Silver is the first game that I essentially played on my own on DS. Uh, a friend of mine was actually, he gifted me his half-broken, well, not gifted me, but he let me have it because he's getting a new one, uh, which was actually really kind of him because he'd be like, oh, you gave me the half-broken one? No, I couldn't afford a DS at the time. So And, you're, and it his, worked. It was just half-broken yeah, in some way that the, um, a, a game store couldn't hinge. take it. Yeah, the hinge right. on the screen was broken. So, like, it, mm-hmm. it, it was really loose flipping up and down. So a game mm-hmm. store wouldn't take it for credit. But it played right. games. So, And I still have it, by the way, because it makes me happy that he was doing that for me. Cause, so I got that, and I was able to afford Soul Silver, And that made me really happy because Silver being my favorite game and also part of the huge origin for my nickname, it was really important for me to be able to play the remake. And right. so then I got the remake. And it was just me reliving my childhood again and just falling in love with this game, the story, the music, everything all over again. And it it was just, it's fun. I mean, I sit there and I really, and there was a lot of stuff added to it that made you more interested. Plus, all the new Pokemon, because I was a fan of Gen 3, you know, so I had Gen 3's Pokemon in there accessible to me at the end. And the little quirky things that I like, like the bug catching contest. I mean, so, so, you know, You've Go gotten off. You've got. You've gotten off on a tangent, Satish. We never do this. No, nah, but anyway. No, but of course, you know, I, I love your stories, and uh, and you know, of and of course, Tristan's as well. Whenever he gets to come on, and he's not right in the future protecting time and space. Uh, I enjoy the you know us just talking about our you know our fun times that we used to have with these games, and how now yeah they've evolved into into these remakes that we have today. And honestly, so long as even though I love would love to see let's say you know silver or or gold or crystal. In a you know in a 3ds kind of model, I would also hope that the I hope we don't start getting into double remix is my point. Unless it's you know yellow, which is technically fire red leaf green, you know red blue. But mm-hmm. other than that, I don't want to get into double re, double remix, triple remix. That makes me scared. But anyway, where we double are right now? Triple remix. <laughs> yes. So in that other words, it's just bad. I'm yellow, with you. yellow, yellow on the 3ds. Heart gold and soul silver. No, just. Super, super hard to gold, though. <laughs> super soul to silver. Triple S on the 3DS. But anyway, uh, but seriously, though. So, yeah, you, you darted my question. You uh, semi-agreed, but then you just immediately went, so, yeah, this game basically yeah. said to hackers, Go for it. don't hack. You can't hack us. 
Yeah, no, I was right because I was just in my amazement of it. But yes, of course, right. 3D makes it much harder. Now, yes. face again, now, saying this as someone who worked with Pokemon Black, not impossible, right. but no, then no, no, we no. have to step up our game. Also, also, let me explain, by the way, when I say hacking, to so all of you might be like, oh, well, no, I don't mean, uh, you know, the idea, because of, of course, yes, you have to step up your game, and I'm sure it was, I don't want to say easy, but it was easier, let's say, to hack, you know, the script, and also to, you know, because, I mean, the script... Yes, scripting is hard, and yes, it's hard to find the pointers and know where you're looking for certain data. But I feel like, you know, it's a bit easier to do that only compared to I am now, like, how do I change up 3D models? Exactly. Where now, personally, I think it's easier. With, you know, with things that are specifically made to do, like, you know, 3D for 3D printers, I assume in my uninfinite knowledge... I don't know how many times you're going to plug that. In my uninfinite knowledge that using this technology, you know, to make 3D models, you can possibly then import them into games now. Uninfinite knowledge, right? But back in, you know, back in the day, yeah, like 10 years ago, because, wait, was this 10 years ago or was it a while ago, wasn't it? I'm uh, pretty sure it was. Soul Silver not 10, 10, what am I saying, ago? 10? I'm, I'm an idiot, 5. Yeah, it was some time, yeah. Right. I'm an idiot. I said 10. But still. It was because okay. I'm Not sitting here and I'm like, no, that was that was Ruby and Sapphire. I'm close. Not not that close. But anyway. So um still though, it was, you know, three D models, yes. But but still, you know, again, a lot harder to map, I feel. Because, you know, there's a reason why, of course, Fire Red and Leaf Green are very popular amongst hackers. Because, the you know, it's just, not just, because, again, that is still hard in itself to learn. But it's still just, you know, 3D, uh, not 3D, 2D, you know, models and or 2D maps that you can just, re you know, use. The, they're called tiles and tile sets. You can just, you know, fix up those tiles. You can re-import them. Uh, we all know where the data is now if you just, you know, look hard enough and you really study uh, how to script. And it's just, I'm sure it's a lot easier to just kind of relocate things here and there, where in this game, you know, just like in the other games, you have to think about the fact that uh, it's not like RPG Maker, where you make things from scratch. This Correct. game has been packed. It's been packed. So, and packed in a way where... It would be like saying, okay, everyone, you see this packed up box that another person packed up for you? You have to find empty room in that box and from that work around it so you can put in stuff that you want to and remove stuff that they've done but without setting off the bomb <laughs> that's located, a weight-censored bomb that is located underneath the box. It sounds like a crazy analogy, but it's true. Because if you move something the wrong way, oops, your ROM is bad. Oops, you just screwed it up. Hopefully you have a hopefully you have a backup. Oops, it's gone forever. Right? Mm -hmm. Which again can happen in Fire Red. But I oh, assume... wait, Fact says March two thousand ten in America. So actually Thank you. So it, it's interesting four years. because it's crazy because March two thousand ten is not that long ago. But right. because of all the Pokemon that has come out since then Hmm. It almost feels that way. Because, let me think. Let me... No, hmm. really think about that for a second. Because we've had one every year. So after Soul Silver, Black 1, Black 2, X and Y, and we're about to get tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, I'm sorry, on Friday, the remix of right. the third gen. Let's think about this, shall we? Um, I assume 2010, it may have been a bit later for us in Merca. I assume so, but yeah, you look at it's weird though because yeah, 2010. No, March 2010 I, in America, dude. But no, what I mean is, I mean Japan got it a bit earlier. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Like, and then and I, I think they've maybe closed the gap a bit more in certain uh, certain you know, newer games, but no, but yeah, looking at this, we got Black One, we got Black Two, and I'm only counting one of the games because you count both. I mean, they both come out at the same time. Black One, Black Two, uh, X, and now Omega Ruby. And that's, yeah, that's four. That's one every year, if we assume that, you know, yeah. March. because that's the yeah. way it basically so, had worked. And we were all talking about this, but it's just amazing that they've been able to put it out at this pace. Well, because, you look I at, mean, you know, it's selling, well, I think, yeah. think of it like this. Think of it like this. You know, now what they've been doing, you know, ever since, of course, you know, Fire Red Leaf Green, is the idea that the first game, you know, we are... Yep, and, September and, and, and 2009 I like in Japan. Okay. 
And by the way, again, I hate using the word prototype because that that that, that uh, makes it sound as if there's an inferior product, which there isn't. But the idea of okay, the new game that's made on the new platform is no duh new. And you know, and so there's going to be some kinks, and there's going to be some new things that we're going to try out, that we're going to see how they work in later games. And you look at, you know, um, Harkold Soul Silver, and then it's just, and you see some things that were left over from the previous game, where the waving Pokemon sign, that you know turns, that was left over from previous data in Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, or I think specifically Platinum. So it's right. something they wanted to implement, but they didn't just yet. So the idea that it's just, okay, we'll try and, and then when they make, you know, the, the remake, because you look at Ruby and Sapphire, right? And then they made the remakes, and then those were glorious. And then they even made Emerald after that, which was glorious. Pearl came before HeartGold Soul Silver, but still, you know, right. Gen 3, that was how that worked, which is why in Emerald, uh, the wireless cable, link cables work with Fire Red and, and uh, Leaf Green only, and not Ruby Sapphire. But anywho... You know, the idea that they start off a new gen with the new game that, that, you know, the new games that are great, but have, again, nothing lacking, but you see how they're improved upon in Heart Gold Soul Silver in this case. And how they'll, you know, they added in more 3D, they, you know, but not making it look weird. And now you look at the same thing with X and Y, where I'm not saying, again, in any way that X and Y are an inferior product, because that's silly. But I am sure that. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire will be a step up rather than a step back. Mm. Because they've just had the time to look at, you know, what they were doing with X and Y, work on anything that, you know, couldn't be worked on in time, and possibly add even more things that are making us go, whoa, man, no way. Nah, dude, no, that couldn't be possible. Because that's what we always say every single year. And then they show us up. Yeah, no, and I'm down with it. I mean, I sit there and I'm just really glad. And I I think that I'm going to have the same fondness for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire that I have had for Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Right. And, you know, we've seen already, I think what, what's cool for me now is, like, I can say that because uh, when Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out, I was into the Internet, but I wasn't following, like, everything that they were doing. Whereas for right. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I've sat here with you and with some other friends of mine, and just every step they've made, like, oh, this is going to be in the game, that's going to be in the game. Like, we've been able to do an actual preview show on it out of how much information right. has been leaked, right. which is cool. No, there are a lot of, uh, you know, cool things about – uh, you know, where we've gone is because in some ways it feels like, oh, no, we're not, you know, we're being spoiled, like, in a weird way. But in some ways it's just, you know, no, never mind. I love this. I love all of this. This is great. You know, because it's a bit unlike something like professional wrestling where it's a giant story, where in this case it's just, I want more of it. Please give me more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's just so damn good. But anyway, um, talking about, so we've talked about what we've, you know, enjoyed. We talked about the idea that, yeah, it made hacking harder, but I assume now, you know, you've gotten the hang of it. We've gotten the hang of it in terms of, you know, what we can do with this game. But of course, I mean, hell, the idea that the opening is in 3D, too, I just realized. Touch to start. That in itself is in 3D. And it's also on two screens, by the way. Another interesting thing that I think most people don't think about if they think about hacking, where it's just, you know, Game Boy Advance, one screen. Heart right. Gold, Soul Silver, you know, Diamond, Pearl, Pla- Two screens. You have to deal with two of those damned things and how they interact <laughs> in some ways. No, right. imagine that. Some, you know, how they interact, I think, is the craziest thing as well. Yeah, I mean, but that's like us literally going into a session about, like, man, the DS is a cool system, which it is. But No, no, no. We don't, we don't have to do that at all. But it's just the idea that, you know, again, when you think of it from a, a hacking perspective, one that obviously a lot of people don't really go into, it's just, guys, everything was good. And then the DS came. <laughs> right? And then the Fire Nation. No, but see, like, definitely, this, yeah. the DS is something that people are going to look at with a lot of... Like, in the future, they'll be happy. Because I think Harkle and Soul Silver are going to go down as one of the, the crown jewels of their Pokemon right. achievements. And it, it's just something I don't think that is exactly a minority opinion either. Where most people that you talk to, I think, not only were extremely fond of Gen 2 but really liked the remakes. I, yeah, I would feel the same. I mean, because I don't think that these remakes did anything to, you know, like when you look at remakes in movie form, right, usually they shit on everything you loved. 
But in this case, I think they just found a way to add on to it to say, like, hey, listen, you know, I know you like that old game because it was great, but here's Lyra. Now, if you're thinking, why the hell do we have Lyra? Well, what did you have before? I had nothing. So you have Lyra, and she can really, and she really helps you out in certain ways. You know, apparently her grandparents are the daycare people, right? Which, by the way, was great when her grandmother's just, oh, that that boy is your friend. Yes, grandma. Oh, oh, I it's fine to have a boy who is also your friend. <laughs> you know, and then just although it's really funny because when when you tell her in other games or you know in, in Crystal or you know Gold Silver, when you tell her that you don't want her to raise uh you you know to your Pokemon, she goes, "Oh, fine. Well then, come again." Right? And it sounds kind of cold, but I'm like, oh, well, you know, whatever, old lady, I'm not giving her my business. Now in this game, it sounds extremely cold. Where it's just, oh, okay, fine then. Don't date my daughter, don't give me your Pokemon, fine, go to hell. And I'm just like, come on, I know you, I know you, give me a better response than that, I fucking know you. Oh, fine, well then, there's the door, you'll see my husband on the way out. Won't be getting any calls about Pokemon eggs from that guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, which, by the way, another cool feature. It's just, like, it really shows you, I think, I don't know if it's them kind of making it easier for, you know, the children playing, because I'd make an argument that, you know, Pokemon competitive battling gets, you know, is where the adults can play this game and not feel, you know, where it's just, you know, people can just go, oh, adults should be playing this game. Right, because there's no functions of this game that could work for adults. None whatsoever. No, and what's the fucking, right? But you look at the story, and yeah, if you, or the gameplay, and you can tell that they're making certain things a bit easy for the kids, where it's just, you know, uh, you mentioned the last game, just, hi, how are you doing? They're like, my name is Bill, take this item! Right? Yeah, Bill I gave mean, you, you, Bill you gave you a master ball. To me today, when you hmm. were playing Soul Silver, you realized that poison could no longer kill your Pokemon. Oh, God, and that is a bit In fact, later on, I believe this was implemented in Gen 5 in Black, hmm. uh, the poison, or it may have been Gen 6. I, I get wrong on this kind of stuff. I am wrong on this kind of stuff a lot, rather. Screw my hmm. grammar. But in <laughs> one of them, the poison actually stopped affecting you outside of battle completely. I find that frustrating because, look, like I'll be honest, right? The idea that the idea that uh, you can have your Pokemon be cured from poison by having it wear off is ineffective. I, I enjoy the idea, but I think it should be more of a randomizer kind of thing where you don't know if it's going to happen. If it happens, good for you, right? But if it doesn't, that's why you should be carrying antidotes. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. there's a reason why they put in an antidote and didn't just say, hey, hop on your bicycle and go to the nearest Pokemon Center. There's a reason for that. You know, just get rid of antidotes then. And just give me, you know, and just keep full heals. Because they're just like, oh, we only need, you know, I don't know. I, I Maybe I'm, I sound like a bitter old man. But it's just, you know, but, okay, you make some things easier, fair enough. You know, you have competitive battling for us, fair enough. But, you know, I still feel like they just wanted to add on more to it, you know, for, for them and for us. And, and of course, again, make things. Oh, now I remember what, exactly what I was trying to say. Pinpoint, pinpointing the. Uh, I don't know if they're making it also. You know, adding on to the easy. They're also adding on social commentary, which is everyone you talk to. Hey, man, it's totally exchange numbers, yeah, bro. Yeah, you said that on air, where you think that apparently that's yes. Japan's Japan's yes. plot to get yeah, them Japan's to be more plot. social, where it's like well, if no, you no, talk no. to people, they'll was... give you stuff. That was my half joke, half realistic take on, you know, the general moving towards, you know, like, you know, giving people things. You walk out, you walk out in Japan and everyone's out in Japanese after playing Pokemon is supposed to just expect to get things for free. No, but the idea is, in this case, it's just a commentary on, <clears throat> excuse me, a commentary on the idea, right? That it's just, you know, all the kids nowadays, what are they doing? Totally give me your cell phone number, man. Totally. Like, everybody. Even the old man at the daycare center just said, I mean, totally give me your number or something. I mean, you know, got to use the poker gear my granddaughter gave me. Yeah, no, kind of wanted. funny because yeah. I think, okay, we've talked about Gen 2 before, haven't we? So 
Have we? I, there is a there is a show on Pokemon yeah. Crystal that we've done. Yes, that's um, what I'm talking about. No, because like, all right, it's very easy for me to sit here and talk about why mm-hmm. Gen Two and the remake of Gen Two is amazing. You know, because yes, of course. the little quirky things about the Gen, like I mentioned, the bug catching contest, bug catching contest, or something right. like I don't know how you felt about this, but Kurt and the Apricorn Pokeballs, I liked those so much so that yeah. I actually have um, a plush of a Moon Ball. Which was oh, one of the in my head. You in, could, a plush of in Kurt. In my head. Yeah, exactly. Just I have a plush of Kurt. Um, what? Yeah, I dude. Really, if they make those, that would be really interesting. I assume. Okay, I assume <laughs> just there's, with talking life action, in, and all he says is, "Give me your apricorns." I assume it isn't like licensed by Nintendo, but I'm sure Etsy has just Kurt, you know, with a bunch of different apricorns around him. And that it's would just, be fine. And it's, I mean, com- yeah. just compared to, like, but he has to have phrases like "give me your apricorns" or "save the slowpokes, everybody." Only you can slave the slowpokes. I would like to squeeze them and just go, "Ah, you're hurting my back." <laughs> <laughs> I hurt my back and I couldn't go save the slowpokes. It's up there to was, you. There was also what? something specific about Heart Gold and Soul Silver, uh, and we talked about in Gen Two, like the unused Celebi event, and how we basically missed out on a lot. But um, right. we got a Celebi or something like that around here because mm-hmm. of the fact that – and we got a, a continuation as to the rival's backstory, basically yes. you know, implying – excuse me, because we all had been told that that was Giovanni's kid, but it was set directly to explain that that's Giovanni's kid, the rival that you deal with. And – Maddie's making fun of me because I said only I can slave the slowpokes because apparently I can't say save the slowpokes. That's a tongue twister for me. But I thought you said save. But I, I don't know. I uh, no, I did screw up. I heard myself, but I just laughed okay. because I'm like apparently I can only gonna... poke save the slowpokes. Look, yes, they're only... all they're all ice types now. How cool <laughs> is that, dude? I just hacked all of your slowpokes. But <laughs> that's a terrible thought. But <laughs> um. No, I think if I remember correctly, there was like it's a type of specific event where you ended up mm-hmm. pursuing Giovanni on your own because Celebi took you to the past. Sounds normal, yeah. No, it's something like that, and I, my memory is, is mm-hmm. failing me right now, so I'm probably going to see if well, you know, fact- well, if if Maddie could, uh, yeah, if a fact checker Maddie could help us with that, while well, I think this is hard gold soul silver specific. Yes, well, I get something. I can tell you something that we didn't get actually. Uh, we in Japan, there was a Shin, a, a Sinjo, Shinjo, a Sinjo ruins. Shinjo, ah, okay. It is Sinjo, apparently. Sinjo ruins that we do not get to go to in America. Because uh, Arceus, that was distributed at Japanese movie theaters and Toys R Us, enables the player to enter the Sinjo ruins and choose between a level one Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina. So mm, that sounds about right. I'm, I'm go- but I'm going to safely assume that unless you're using a hacking device, you are not able to get into the Sinjo ruins. But something even cooler, not only can, no, no, something cooler than we are, we were fucked in America. Uh, apparently, there is an unused Hall of Origin event. Right now, that uh, I heard about. It is it is not as well known. It is an unused Hall of Origin event, Arceus. And it's within Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. And if it's obtained through the, you know, the hacked Azure flute or a warp to the hall, right, you can enable a second trip to the Sinjo ruins. And that hiker in the cabin actually has different dialogue. And now you can choose between the other ones that you couldn't get before. However, and of course, there's even another cutscene. However, there is no way to get the third one. So if for some reason you choose, you know, I choose Dialga second time around, I'll choose Palkia. Well, poor Giratina. I mean, you just kind of left her there, like what? Or you kind of left it there. What are you doing? Like you're just like I just took. It's like saying, look at all these three puppies. They're brothers. Awesome. I'm gonna take. <laughs> you said you, you're just alone. I'm gonna leave you alone, puppy. I mean, you know, whatever. Go to another family. Fuck off. Like that's really. I feel like that's such a big move. Where it's just at least in the. At least when you're picking the Pokemon from Professor Oak or whatever other professor, I only pick one. And yes, your rival picks the other, which it does kind of make a sad little thing. But hey, the other Pokemon can be with Professor Oak. But it's just the idea of, you know, it's just, I can come back and get both and then leave one? Okay. So the third one's just like, 
Come on, guys. I'm cool. <laughs> Hiker, hikers pet. I imagine a hiker petting a Giratina. Arr, maybe next time. I don't know why the hiker is a pirate now, but he can be a pirate, right? So he's like, arr, maybe next time. Giratina's like, but it's okay. It's it's okay. Uh, Cry it out. So, fact checker finally, uh, thank you once again, uh, was able to come through thank here. Thank you for cutting me off. Thank you. Yes, I had to because of your <laughs> No, please. No, arr. please, thank you. I, I need no. this sometimes. But no, so yeah, thanks here because essentially what happened was, uh, so verbatim here, you go back three mm-hmm. years in time with either Ethan or Lyra and see Silver and Giovanni arguing about Silver not wanting to join Team Rocket. And right. then you go back to fight Giovanni in the present, and when you beat him, he'll tell you that you remind him of Silver, his son. And this was cool for me because, all right, this was one of those theories because you fight him in the waterfalls, in the cave in the waterfall, and mm-hmm. – all right, so I don't know. I don't think you've ever seen this scene because, based on me telling you about the event, you haven't. But right. when you beat Giovanni in this event, you he leaves the room, like, and you remember like the general little cave entrances. Yes. Like okay, so he leaves through the cave door, and then you hear the sound of the water, the waterfall going on in the background, and then a mm-hmm. rocket, a rocket transmission comes through, essentially saying that. Giovanni is not with us. Wow. And so, now many people just sit there and they'll say, you're thinking too much about it. And I get that. I totally do. But I am one of those people who's on board with the idea that Giovanni, out of frustration through everything, might have done something drastic. And it's it's well, left. It, there are some uh, things either way that make it this obviously a theory and not in any way a fact. Hmm. But it's just something that I thought was intriguing. I'll I'll bring up the idea too that I mean you know I I can understand someone thinking that he may have done something like that you know where because of the idea that you know you sit there and it's just you know I mean Giovanni is probably not happy right and it's not like it's like it's not just uh, you know I know it's a kid's you know. Uh, a kid's game and a quote unquote, you know, and, but at the same time, it's just, you know, this is an America writing the script where if you just let America specifically Disney write it, it's just Giovanni left, but he's totally having awesome adventures in Hawaii away and having fun with his kid named silver. Everyone's happy. No one died. No, like this is Japan. So in Japan, it's more like Giovanni really had a bad day, right? His pain and sadness is not going to go away. He was beaten by a ten-year-old, everybody. You know, so it's just, it's, it's not, it's not as happy as you know many people would have made it had I think the game either been American or you know American-made specifically. And also, but of course, be having to have you know know that there is an American audience there that are children. They can't just say you know what I what prob what I assume and you assume happened. You know, and I and I'm sorry to say this. I don't think he's having awesome adventures in Hawaii with Silver. It was it's a lovely thought, but I'm 98 percent sure that he's not having a vacation. Nor has yeah, he turned, no. seen the light and turned good. It's totally possible. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, I know it sounds like a giant joke, but it's just the idea on how you know you get Disney or any of these other. You know, kind of these more American, you know, they look at when they think the children can't handle, and they just go, and Gin Giovanni realized the error of his ways. You know, he lived out his days with a very happy, long, happy life. They were musicals. It was great. The yeah, animals so talked and shit. It's not something you know? completely out of the question. And Giovanni, of course, right. in, in storyline, had then been beaten in Gen 1 and in Gen 2 on numerous occasions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, food for thought. Uh, on happier notes, there were some things, you know, you mentioned earlier very quickly, the Kimono Girls mm-hmm. had a much yes. bigger role in this game. In fact, you needed mm-hmm. to beat them to get the, and this I might be wrong on, the clear bell or the title bell, which I think mm-hmm. were the items that, because if you got the Rainbow Wing or the Silver Wing, you could visit their towers, but you couldn't in these games actually go through with the encounters unless you had the bells. Right. Right. And that, that was cool. Quite interesting. I always had a fondness for the Kimono Girls because just walking into a place of cultural people who were using all EV evolutions, I was like, this, this is cool. This is something that I they can always, appreciate. They, 
they always struck me as something fun, I think, uh, fun and interesting and uh, in a way new because of the idea that they, and I hate to use this word, but they let it slide. You know, in a game that has a lot of localizations, not even translations, just complete and utter localizations, right? Uh, and, and, you know, some kind of translating-ish, but still pretty localized all around, right? So just say, and, you know, and of course, sprite changes when necessary. It was very nice to just go, leave in the kimono girls. Why? Just, just leave them in, you know? It was nice to have that, I think. Instead of just being kimono girls, let's try our hardest to make it into a restaurant where they're now, you know, they're like their 1950s, um, you know, uh, the women on the on the roller skates at those like 1950s, like, um, you know what I'm thinking of, like the, the drive through kind of takeout-ish. You know what I'm thinking of, right, Satish? I'm not crazy. <laughs> sure. You shut your Satish mouth, damn it. You know what I'm talking about. But um, but anyway, so, yeah, I, I'm happy that it wasn't just I – mean, maybe that was an idea at one point or another by the American branch, but I'm really happy that it didn't turn out that way, especially because that would have made things very awkward in this game. But I'm really happy that it was just, you know what, leave it. You know, and as a kid, I got to see these – I was like, oh, there are women in these dresses, and it is – a hard to pronounce word. Okay, I battle Pokemon, right? And now that I'm older, I'm like, Kimono Girls. Well, shit, Kimono Girls. You know, I was like, that is new to me. You know, yeah, and just the idea that it's like, well, they, you know, they were they were capped. I mean, they weren't in any way changed into something that would have been, you know, kind of I don't say anti-Japanese, but yeah, I mean, it would have been like, let's erase all the Japanese that we can. Where well, I'm very happy didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, um, so I was thinking about other yeah. things from this game that I thought were cool. Um, the GB well, sound, mm-hmm. which I mentioned. Did you like that, or do you do you not know much of it, or the GB sound? The GB sounds. GB sounds. Uh, no. Oh wait, you mentioned the idea that I've mentioned, you mentioned this before. The, the, yes. yes, you it's have. It's a key item. Yes. Basically, right. if you beat all 16 gyms, you remember how mm. there's always like a Game Freak building where people will give you stuff like certificates for finishing the Pokedex and stuff like that? Right. So originally it was in Celadon, which it still is in Gen 2 because Celadon is accessible. And so if you beat all the 16 gyms, you can go there and they will give you a GB Sounds key item. In Japanese, it's the GB Player. And mm. basically, you can change. I don't know if this goes for every area. Pretty much, when you turn it on, it plays the original 8-bit track from Gold and Silver mm-hmm. for that, that area. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Now, the audio effects, like things like clicking the menu and stuff like that weren't changed, but right. the background themes and the battle music were. And that was really Which cool. Which is, it just, you have all that data. You know, it's just, it's such a nice touch. I mean, you have all of that data. So you can, you know, and you make your new stuff so that, you know, it's a new game because, some people might enjoy hearing the old theme. Some might go, "Oh, it was just rehashed." You know, they didn't do a lot of work. So yeah, they make the new, the you know, the move, the the, the move themes. The you know, Miltank composed all of them. They make the new themes, and you are then able to just say, "Hey, you like those old ones? Here you go." I mean, you have a versus seeker anyway. You can go back and fight these people technically, you know, all over again, with you know, with uh, other Pokemon in your box. Let's say, given back, you know, you put into your party, and now you can start the game all over again for the most part, with your Pokemon and your um, and your old Pokemon music, which is very interesting to do. Uh, so, so getting more into the... Because we, we dabbled a bit into the behind-the-scenes stuff, but I want to tackle some more. We have a lot of leftover content, like a lot of stuff like, you know, from the item bag, overworld sprites, slot machines, the underground, and some audio data from Platinum. And I only bring these up each and every time just to have the just the idea of, you know, if you are able to use, let's say, um, you know, uh, ac- action replays or if you're playing it, let's say, with via an emulator, you can switch over your overall sprites, which I find interesting. Where, you know, there are some sprites that weren't introduced in Hard Gold and Silver, but you can just take some of the gym leaders and things like that and just be like, I am now you, you know, or or I am now fighting you. You don't have your Pokemon, but you are now looking like you. As in, you know, some of the older gym leaders. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I find it very interesting. Also, the idea that the underground is still sort of there, which is weird. They took the casino out in, in this game, right, for sure? Yes, they did. But and I, that upset but me, I, because I was a big fan. I here's know the why. The game corner, well, no, because the thing is, the game corner, I, I 
I don't know if maybe you can help me confirm this, Maddie, but from what I'm reading, it was European, you know, legislation. Yes. That involved them, which is um, which I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, saying that that's the issue, Maddie. What I'm specifically ask, specifically asking is, did Japan follow suit, or if I get a Japanese version right now, I'm playing pachinko. That's I what think, I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I remember that European legislation essentially forced them to have to get rid of the game corner, and that sucked right. because. But I'm I understand kind of a big fan. it completely. Honestly, I understand it completely because I always found it to be... Okay, let, let me rephrase this. As a comedian, I am upset because I was always able to just make jokes about the fact that they're, you know, it's just... I mean, think about it. You know, everyone who says, see, Pokemon is bad because devil Pokemon, you know, devil monsters that are fighting each other and promoting evolution. And I always got so angry because, I, again, as a comedian who just really kind of, like, you know, notices and looks around, no one ever actually played the goddamn games. Because if they did, they would at the very least add gambling to everything. Where it's just, hey, kids, learn how to gamble. It's okay. You only have to spend your money on the coins that you're buying. Oh, damn, you ran out of them. Well, you're going to buy more? Okay, kid, you know there's a whole game out there, right? There's an entire world out there. You're spending hours in this parlor to get these prizes. You might have a problem, kid, and you're only eight. No, Satish, do you have a gambling problem? Maybe I, this is why you want to open up a damn, damn casino, Satish. This is definitely something viable. That's a good criticism. <laughs> would you I'm let kids into your I, casino? No. Damn it. I was hoping he would say, I would never let kids into my casino. And then I can take our recorded podcast and just turn it into, I would let kids into my casino. I know. I've watched Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> I'm not falling for that trick. <laughs> just, just, I'm Timmy Turner, and I cheated on my math test. I never cheated on my math test. Hi, I'm Timmy Turner, and I cheated on my math test. But I remember it was like a gruff bully voice. Yeah, so it was like, no, Hi, no, it was, I'm yeah. Timmy Turner, and I cheated on my math test. I never cheated on my math No, but what's really funny, too, is I don't know why. Now that you said, you know, like, I would never fall for that trap. I don't know why I would even, like, just want to do this. But it's just, you know, Satish, I'm not that stupid player recording. I fell for that trap. <laughs> like, just, what? No, I fell for that trap. And you, I don't know why. But anyway, moving back to, to this. Um, for like you know, three minutes. For like three minutes, right. No, but seriously, though, the slot machines, yes, they were removed. Uh, and I understand it because, you know, again, as a comedian, it sucks because I sit there and not only with the whole, you know, no one ever complained about it, but I sit there and just laugh where it's just kids gambling. But I, I understand why it was removed because, yeah, kids oh, gambling. So here's your update. Thank um, you. Thanks, Maddie. The slot machines are in the Japanese version. Everywhere else got Voltorb Flip, which was Minesweeper. Yes, 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 it was. Uh, so, yeah, and I assume because in Japan, Pachinko isn't the craziest thing in the world. Because, yeah, I believe they were Pachinko. Well, no, were they technically Pachinko? I think in some games they were. Pachinko is the whole, like, the little, like, the, um, well, you saw it in Die Ranger, Satish. The, the little tiny, like, um, the, the silver balls. Blinko. Pachinko. We had like a one oh, of them was like the Pachinko player. About. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think in one of the gens they had like a Pachinko thing, but most of the time it's just slot machine. But I'm pretty sure one machine. gen did. Yeah, but uh, but anywho, so another thing that we didn't have. Well, first off, there's a debug mode that did exist, but does it now? Uh, and and also lock capsule. Do you know what this is? The lock capsule. Yes, it is an unreleased event item, and it was intended right. to be transferred into black and white to unlock an event there. And it can be added to the bag through hacking, but since its you know, purpose is to bring it to another game, it does nothing in this game. That's wonderful. Yes. Um, so I don't know if it can be transferred after that. I'm not going to ask Maddie because I just feel like this is getting silly. But it, it would be very interesting if it could, but I assume that exact event could just be unlocked. By, you know, doing it in black and white. So so it doesn't really, you know, if, if, if there was even such an event that was now hidden or was just made plain as day because, you know, black and white is the next game that they just no. play, we don't need this item because and we, we can just do stuff. it. I mean, we got to this point in the podcast and we didn't even mention the Pokey Walker or the spiky-eared Pichu. And which, by the way, which by the way, I would like to mention to everyone. Uh, she's thinking the show is the show over. No, we're extending it for the next half an hour. 
definitely, you know, keep on listening in and have some fun with us. So, uh, I wish you would the tell archive, me these things that means before nothing. you tell everyone else. To anyone, I love you, man. So, and to anyone else <laughs> no, listening in the archives, this means nothing. He, he to you. tells me, he tells me thirty seconds before, and we're extending this for a half hour. Uh, if I had something, did you to think? Do, Okay, dude, 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 this is me, though. At 12.27, I would have been, and then we're at the end. Good night, everybody. No, I would have been fine if at 12.27 you gave me a heads up, like, hey, and we're going to extend this for a half hour. You gave me hope until the last 15 seconds, and then decided to tell me, and half hour more. Well, no, beginning at any point during the half an hour. It's our show, dude. But the idea that, you know, because I looked at it in 1223, and I was like, well, you know, I mean, I'll wait a couple minutes until, but, you know, we had a lot to say. And then immediately it was just 1230. And I thought, oh, let's inform people now while we're, but anyway, uh, also, wait a minute. You're an asshole. Let me tell everyone why he's an asshole. He has the, um, the, the, the board, the soundboard open. And he can see the on-air time. Yeah. You, you, you've you, known it all along. Yeah. You're a monster. They anyway, didn't know I knew. Forward. I didn't know you knew. I know. That's why this is fun for me. You're a monster. Why um, do you think I don't get so, mad at you when you do these things? I, I'm, I'm really in control the whole time. I just, this is all for the show. I would mute you, but at the same time, I love you so much, and I want to, you know, talk to you about these things that I won't. But I'm very upset at you right now. Well, I'll tell you something that won't make you upset. If you send that lock cancel, lock capsule illegitimately to black and white, it can be opened up for TM95. Snarl. Can you get the, po- the TM in the game without needing the lock capsule? Um, it involves another event, I believe. Also, you cannot legally obtain the lock capsule, so you were cheating when you thought about it, Matt. When you thought right. about it. Well, well of when course When you thought I was. about it. Talking about it made you a cheater, because you knew. Right, yes. Also, something that I, that I also... Also, I want to point out that it's cool that it does something, because you would think that maybe they would... I, I also thought you were going to say, if you send it to your black and white, Ill, you know, illegally, because you're not, you're not supposed to have it, your game will explode. I don't know why I always go to explode, but I find it the funniest because the games can't actually explode. They can, you know, they cannot work. They can, you, know, you can scratch them a bit and they just won't load. But the idea of just the game going, is that, that's fire. That, that's fire. I just find funny for some reason. So it's just the idea of just, oh, if you send it over there, Nintendo will know. And they will find, I will find you. Uh, Liam, Liam Neeson? I'm working it for Nintendo. Really funny Pretty funny if something game. like an illegitimate lock capsule like triggered a, an alarm for them. Where it's like as soon as you logged on to Wi-Fi, mm-hmm. somebody use the lock capsule. Find them now. <laughs> Take them <laughs> down. Let's as go, guys. You, the wheel, anti-piracy wheel. Nintendo squadron. We're God, that here. sounds like a fun video game. The anti-piracy Nintendo squadron, right? That, that sounds five. like a, a Sentai that you would make. It's it's just three guys and two girls that just constantly bust down people's doors and just goes, you used Pokebank illegally. So, I mean, what are you, what, what are you, what you going to do? We wanted to let you know that. Also, fix your own damn door, you fucking hacker. Just because they broke down the door. So it's just fix your and own they don't door. pay for the damages because that's don't pay their the, motto. No, they don't pay for the damages, right? And it's just like, you know, immediately, you know, like uh, lawyers just come up. Not lawyers, but like the police. You can't just go around busting down doors. Look at the user agreement. Have a nice day, gentlemen. The police <laughs> like, are like, nobody even yes. read that. Damn you, no one ever did. No one Flash ever read game that freak, because no one would. Game Flash Freak. Game Freak. This Flash is Game Freak, Freak thing? Well, 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 uh, Game Freak made it, but Nintendo, I would assume, would make all the contracts in terms of user agreements and things like that. I don't know, Game Freak seems more like the type of people that would have the, the, the squad. Because, you know, these are the type of people that program things mm-hmm. like bad eggs into the game to, like, ruin your experience if you overcheated. <laughs> Right, that is true. Oh, by the way, speaking of bad eggs, not if you overcheated, but if you if you put if you saved it with cheats that you shouldn't have, or what is it specifically? Like, okay, because bad eggs, I know they occur, 
But how is like in other words, if you like save them with certain cheats on that you shouldn't though, that will cause the bad egg. Bad egg, right? It wouldn't be just like do like do we know still like what causes bad bad eggs specifically? Where it's just yeah, dude, don't save with that cheat on or something like that. Um, I have to be honest with you. I think the cases to make bad eggs is slightly different towards each generation. So I couldn't Fair confirm enough. to you. Hello? Yes, Mr. Ram. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I lost connection with you for like 30 seconds. But, well, I heard you perfectly. Yeah. Um, essentially, I think you can get a bad egg different ways in each game. Right. So, not sure how you completely screw stuff over, but I just know that once you got one, it was really, really, really bad. Yes. No, you Which done fucked sounds up. sounds redundant. Oh, the right, bad egg no. is bad. Thank you, Captain Obvious Ram. But, and speaking of the really fun, speaking of the fun anti-piracy squad, um, there is an anti-piracy method in in uh, this game. I don't know if you know that, if you noticed. Or well, then again, you bought the game, so clearly you fucking wouldn't. But to anyone who uh, didn't, who tried to emulate the game early on, right? If the game knows. If, oh, sorry, yeah, if the game knows that it's being played on a flashcard or an emulator, and this course is when it first came out, because obviously after, you know, a while, I have after the first day that it happened, I'm sure most emulators would be able to, you know, avoid it, or most uh, flashcards would be updated to go against it. But at the time, the game would freeze at the start of the battle, right? And the player's Pokeballs would just constantly spin. And, and in my head, I think of it as like a loading screen in hell. Where it just it never it never works. You're just there, Ooh. and I find that frightening because it freezes right there, and you can never obviously go through the game because I mean the game's frozen. <laughs> so yeah, that that is what would happen if you. But of course, again, people got through that, so we need the anti piracy squadron to just come there and save the day. And by save the day, I mean just break down people's doors yell at them, and then leave. And it's all, under would, the, it's all in the contract. You would think the anti-piracy squadron had something better to do. Uh, I mean, this is this is what they do. I mean, I think if people around, let's say they're an American-based squadron or they're the American branch, if people right. around America who try to bring over their hacked Pokemon in, in through Pokebank, right, if they were taught that lesson, Right, and one episode could be like could be like a crazy one where it's just someone used the emerald cloning glitch. Damn it, we can't bust in his door, but I have a gut feeling, Sarge. I gotta do it, man. Come on, five mews from one from one person's ID in Pokemon Emerald. That can't just be a coincidence. I would love to do it to, to mess <laughs> with the anti piracy squad, where I clone yeah. my Mew thirty times and just have an entire <laughs> box of shiny. Six IV Mews transfer to my, you know, my black, I'm sorry, my X and Y through Pokebank. But it's completely legitimate because, but the first thing was time, legitimate, hacked by action replay, but legitimate. Because because it's not really a hack in terms of you were, you know, if, if yeah, fucking Nintendo delivered, you'd prove, be able to get on. They can the, prove nothing. And it would have but they're been, sitting there. They're sitting there, and it's just, it's the same ID 30 times. I'm sorry, Jim. You know, it's like, no, it's like, I'm sorry, Jim, but I'm telling you, it checks out. Listen, Sarge. You know, just completely just going nuts on this. Just put, it's like, Jim, you're holding me by the collar. I could have you fired for this. Give me your gun and badge. I had a gun and badge? Jim, where's your gun and badge? <laughs> I don't I know why your anti piracy squad has a gun and badge. <laughs> but I'll tell you what Soul Silver and, and Heart Gold players had. And that was okay. a Poke Walker. If you right. want the game, you can play the Poke Right. Yeah, because you know, I don't have one. Exactly. Completely unrelated to gun and badge. Um, <laughs> but it was an accessory was little, that you yes. could use. Right. Yeah, you could actually, you know, it, it counted your steps as experience for the Pokemon in there. And that was one thing, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And you could actually use it for mini games to allow you to explore some areas that you wouldn't have got otherwise, where you can find some Pokemon that you wouldn't have easily been able to get. Yeah, so there's no exclusive Pokemon, but there are Pokemon that are easier to get through Pokewalker. Um, I'm not 100% sure, because the Pokewalker, 
it could hold. It could link you to two games, and I know you could hold one Pokemon in there at a time. Mm-hmm. And so, let's see. No, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to say because I've heard, that's and this is incorrect. just something that I what I heard. So I'm kind of just throwing out what I heard is that you can get some Pokemon that you may have been able to get, let's say, in either platinum, you know, or diamond pearl, that kind of gen that will obviously, like you said, wouldn't be easy to find. Or possibly from Fire Red Leaf Green, where they did have the opportunity to release new ones, you know, the, the same Pokemon in this game. But that doesn't mean that you're supposed to be able to get everyone just by going and catching them out in the wild. Because, you know, when you release the Pokewalker, you sit there and you go, how do we make this thing feel like it's exclusive? So that you're not going to buy this game secondhand and you're going to give us money specifically. Because, you know, b- by now, of course, it's kind of silly where it's just you're not going to give anyone money by, you know, you're not going to give Nintendo money by buying the game. But at the time, you know, A, piracy is a bitch. It really is. Piracy is a pain in the ass for right. you know, companies like Nintendo. And two, the idea that, you know, you, you you say you buy it secondhand, you know, but in the first week where it's just, you know, uh, oh, I'm buying it off of my friend, let's say. Oh, you know, uh, even then, the friend would have the Pokewalker, yes. But if you're saying, oh, I'm buying it off of, you know, eBay or something and there's no Pokewalker, that's a huge thing where it's just, fuck it, I'd rather buy it from Nintendo in the first week or I'd rather buy it here in the first month. Because why would you get one without the, with the risk of not having an, an essential, quote-unquote, or even added part of the game? You know, the gameplay, where you can just sit there and just, you know, uh, level up your Pokemon or play fun mini games, where, you know, in places where you couldn't bring your DS for some reason. Like class, let's say. Yeah, actually, uh, this was a running gag where because of the pedometer, I had my Pokewalker with me in school. And people were yeah. finding ways to get my Pokewalker up. So we'd be playing catch with my Pokewalker. We'd be, <laughs> at one point, someone took their shoelace tied one end around the metal, like, you know, the, the basically structure under my desk, mm. the, the the metal arm that was holding up my desk. Right. Tied this is when one you were in high ar- school. Yes. Tied right. one arm around that and tied the pokey walker to the other end and just poked it, and it swung like a pendulum, and it up <laughs> like three steps every swing. That's and hilarious. This was me, and this was me in AP Calculus. Right. Right. This was a this was like eleventh grade me, just like toying with my Pokewalker and AP Calculus. That's great. Um, also, by the way, you mentioned something that you only mentioned briefly because we went into that. Uh, some would call it asinine. I would call it genius idea for a new hit TV show. Uh, but anyway, the spiky eared Pikachu. <laughs> oh, sorry, the spiky eared Pichu. You right. mentioned that it exists. It is Time a forest travel. event. Yeah, it is an event. It is a special Elux Forest event. Uh, but there's also, as we always mention in these games, it has a shiny version as well. However, it cannot be obtained shiny through the event. It's it's a bit like Arceus, where there's only one god. There is not, oh, here's this god, but here's the cooler, shinier yeah, a, god. Yeah, it's a right. Pikachu-colored Pichu and yes. a spiky-eared Pichu. Right. And yeah. they were limited to that area where... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I for I forget if you could bring the the spiky. No, the spiky eared Pichu triggered the event at the Alex Forest, right? I I do not know myself. I just would like to mention that you know from what I've been reading, you are unable to get a shiny version of that, and it's only in there as we've always said. You know, since the dawn of time, or since rather you know the second gen, they are in there to make sure that you know if for some reason you were an idiot who decided, I'm going to screw with the game and I'm going to turn on shiny codes for everything, right? If it appeared, your game didn't burst into flames and curse you and your soul. So if if you do that, it's there. But if you end up trying to catch it or whatever or trying to send it to – you can send it to any game technically until you hit Pokebank time where Pokebank goes, no, 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 no. That is shiny. That is not supposed to be shiny. Well, and actually, you can't the spiky-eared Pichu and the Pikachu-colored mm-hmm. Pichu, I mm-hmm. don't believe they were ever able to leave your game because you would get a notification oh, oh, okay. about the Pokemon, especially the spiky-eared Pichu. Um, mm-hmm. One of them, they had traveled through time 
And so they couldn't be transferred from game to game. And this oh, really okay. upset well, then, me because I was really freaking right. fond of them. Yeah, I can understand. And I, if I remember correctly, I think one of them maybe was in black and white, but you just couldn't bring them forward. So they're just stuck in the past. And I get really furious because it's like, give me a really cool event Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And then leave it there. Thanks. Got it. Yeah, that's upsetting. Bastards. So then in this, so in this case, I mean, I, I guess if you were to just flaunt it around to Game Freak and you know Nintendo employees, they'd be like, "You're a hacking person. How did you know?" <laughs> that reminds me of this one game. I think it was it was one of those tycoons where you make video games, mm-hmm. and it was then they had an, ha- an, an anti-hack <laughs> method in there. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know about video them. game tycoon. And the yes, anti-piracy method was that if you had played, if you were pirating a version of this game, you yes. were hit with a glitch that people in the game started pirating your game. And no that matter you what making. you did, you would you always be losing money. Yes. And, and it's it was great. Downright one of the most hilarious pirating features, you know, anti-piracy features I have ever come across. Right, because here is where it becomes interesting, right? Where you're thinking, all right, that's for what it, you know, like it, it sounds funny. It sounds like a funny way to troll, you know, the people that, that pirated it. But why is it funny? Because it doesn't, like, do anything that makes you think that it's trying to say, you dirty hacker who downloaded it. No, no, no. Like, the, the, the Nintendo thing in this game shows you, the game free thing in this game shows you, okay, yeah, the spinning Pokeball, it's because I downloaded it illegally. But in their case, it's just you could think of it as a simple game function where you're losing, a game mechanic where you lose. So people would post on forums, specifically sometimes, the game's forums, and say, hey, man, um, I'm always losing money because people are pirating my game. Like, what can I do to get some money back and maybe to stop them from pirating? (laughs) So imagine getting asked that question and just going, you pirated the game. I would never do such a thing. Then how did you get that only exclusive? You know that happened in another game as well. I can't recall it, but I, I know it was a, it, it was, a, I think it was like a first-person shooter. I don't know if it was for any consoles, but I know it was for the PC. Where if you start the game and you pirated it, there is this huge, giant monster <laughs> that just appears out of nowhere, and you you're constantly trying to. Yeah, you couldn't kill it. It would kill you with, like, one hit, I believe, or two hits. You could only try and dodge it as best as you could, but, and you would constantly shoot it, and it would never die. And it's this freaky-looking monster. I think it has, like, spidery-type legs, and it's fast as hell, and you could never kill it. And you're thinking, and, you know, and people that would say, how could I kill this monster? It is programmed to only appear if you've downloaded the game illegally, and you obviously haven't patched in a way that could fix that. Because if you don't, Bam, it's there. If you buy the game legally, you just start the game, and I think you talk to an NPC, and they, you know, and you just start, you, you continue the game. Everything's fine. It's pretty cool, right? But anyway, so um, yeah, so in in this case, you know, you you were unable to sadly, sadly you are you are unable to spread and spread yep. this Pokemon around. There you go. This is it, by the way, mm-hmm. because I, I'm laughing because I knew that you had read the same article I read. On, yes, on yes, piracy we did. features. Right, uh, right. Sirius Sam 3. After picking up the game's very first gun, pirates are greeted with the super fast, immortal red scorpion enemy. If mm-hmm. somehow the pirates manage to cheat or get around the deadly foe a few levels later, the camera locks in an up and left position, forcing the player to run in silly circles. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah, even if you tried your hardest, it would still do that. I know um, Grand Theft Auto 4, I believe, was the game that yeah, had something called the Drunk Camp. Yeah, fuck with yes. the camera. And whenever you got into a car, it would start to flame up as if it would explode. So you basically couldn't do anything. But anyway, uh, so you know, uh, so if you so if you somehow had a shiny version of a spiky your Pichu, they would look at you, and they would be like, no. Yeah, you know, anyone from Nintendo or Game Freak would go, no. We we are. same thing with Arceus, which is why you cannot send over shiny Arceus because. I mean, I've said it before, but I really want to just put out the idea of, yeah, I know there's that one god, but then there's that really cool shiny god. So, no, the idea of there's, there's, there's one god, you know? But uh, also some, you know, so those Pokemon are unattainable. Also, there's something strange about Nosepass I want to bring up. Nosepass gained the ability to learn Head Smash, like as an egg move, right? And, you know, that wouldn't really mean much. 
but because you know all the Pokemon at the time, lear, you know, were able, had the ability to learn egg, uh, head smash with an egg move in those games, right? But the thing is, apparently, Nose Pass cannot breed with anything that learns head smash, making the move un- unobtainable. <laughs> So if apparently the ability was removed in black and white and remains unavailable even in X and Y. But it's just really funny. <laughs> yeah, I was that gonna really was something was... about the dragons then and then you just bring this nose fast thing to me and I'm laughing because it seems like the dumbest oversight in the world, where Nintendo's like, yeah, that Pokemon could probably learn it. A week later, guys, you realize you made it capable of learning the move and then made it legally unavailable to that Pokemon. And and they must have all looked at each other. No, everyone looked at each other at Game Freak. They all just looked at each other. And the Nintendo executive who said that because they heard the news looked at them. And they looked at the Nintendo executive and they said, did you know the Kogono girls have like a really cool story now? <laughs> did you know that you could get Celebi? Like the executive just glaring them down. Okay, we understand how you feel. We get it. We're, we're right there with you. But you can give your phone, anyone can give you their phone number now. <laughs> just, the sprites are off to the, the point sprites where it's are almost shiny. annoying as hell. What? What was? No, the phone number thing, where, oh, my God, everyone will just, just every single person can give you their number. I but, think what became annoying to me was the idea that you could miss a call, because if I don't have the volume on, it doesn't really register that someone's calling, and then I click the A button to someone, and then I miss the call. And I'm like, damn it, that may have been an important call. I'm worrying about my Pokemon. I'm worrying about my calls in a Pokemon game now. Damn it, I missed a very important call, possibly. But anywho, but anywho, um, so yes. Yeah, I was going to mention the uh, the Dragon's Den. Dragon's Den. Because uh, I believe in the newer ones, you get to team up with the arrival against Claire and Lance. And I don't know about you, but I just thought that was wicked awesome. Yes, that is indeed wicked and awesome. Together, combined. Into a wicked awesome hybrid, <laughs> and you could also pull off uh, getting an extreme speed Dratini. I think that was something that was given to you all in Crystal, because mm-hmm. uh, Dragonite, uh, is, you know, essentially from Dratini, cannot normally learn extreme speed. But if you toyed with like the master of the dragons that or something and answered his quiz, he would give you an extreme speed Dratini. I wasn't aware of this until Heart Gold Soul Silver because I hadn't played Crystal. Right. I don't remember that happening, but I mean, I, it's also been a while for me as well, and I'm sure you know more than I. I would like to bring up something, now that I brought up Nose Pass, you thought that was funny. I want to bring up something else that I think you might also find enjoyable before we have to kind of run off. Uh, there are these out of, okay, so there are these um, NPCs in National Park, right? And, you know, when there's a bug catching contest, they're all there. When there is not, when there is not one, they're actually moved. They aren't, like, deleted or something. They're moved to the upper left corner of the map, out of, like, out of bounds. <laughs> no, it gets better. You can it find them, Ben. You can find them if you do the walkthrough Rawls sheet, and they're all lined up in a column. And their dialogue is the same as it would be during the contest. But I'm, I'm, I'm issuing a challenge. Do us all a favor. And, you know, uh, uh, someone who is a, oh, as a hacker, please change the dialogue. Somehow find a way to maybe remove Pokemon contests either from the game or just do something where you could change the dialogue at least when they're out of bounds somehow. So that if you're an idiot who just goes, I'm going to walk out of bounds and talk to these guys. I can, I can do anything. I, I have this cheat. And you talk to them and they go, this is where we are when we're not doing Pokemon contests. Talk to the other, talk to the other one. This is a kind of hell for me. Like, you know, the third no, one. I, would I wish like I could see the to... rest of my friends. No, I get I hungry just... here. I would go further than that, just the second you mm-hmm. talk to them. So you're one of those action replay le- users, aren't you? That's what you look like. Or maybe like. the second just... one, or maybe he's using an emulator, isn't he? Just, <laughs> They're just, just all the... in conversation about you being a cheater. Just yeah. And it would be the... great where it's like, how do they yeah. know? The third one. I hope you use the right action replay code. If you use the wrong walk through wall sheet, you can fuck up your save file. The fourth one? The fourth one? 
no, the, no, no, just this is really cre- – no, but like I would like the last part to be you should save just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I should save just in case. No, John, no. But anywho, uh, so yeah, they're all lined up, and their dialogue is exactly the same as the, during the contest. So it's not like they're just different characters. They're the same characters. It's just you're not supposed to interact with them. But of course, I assume Nintendo, knowing what people are, are able to do – they don't want to do something where let's say they turn off the script or something crazy happens. Where if you go out there and you're like, oh, let me click A. Data erased. This game will melt in five seconds. Like, w- what? So you're able to speak to them and they give you dialogue, but obviously they're all lined up in a damn... They're all lined up outside, out of bounds, just waiting. Just, is it our time yet? No. You wait here until a Pokemon contest. Bug contest. Okay. But, uh, yeah. That's the note we're leaving this on, everyone. The happiest note we can. I'm smiling. Uh, thank you guys. I, I hope you're happy to... with yourself. I'm, I, I actually hate myself on a normal day. But anyway, we would like to thank you guys for listening to those guys. And, you know, if you want to listen to any more of our shows, please do. Uh, we have our Tumblr, thoseguysontheradio.tumblr.com, where you can see all of our old archive shows, like WWE shows, WWE pay-per-views, Pokemon games, future Pokemon games that we'll be doing, um, you know, Gravity Falls, Steven Universe, Gotham, The Flash, Arrow, Black Dynamite, Mike Tyson Mysteries, um, and many more Dragon Ball Z movies, Bleach movies, and many more. Uh, also, our Facebook, slash Those Guys on the Radio, or you can just search up Those Guys. Our Twitter, at Those Guys Radio, with the name Hillbilly Jim. That's a WWE joke. And, which we also post not only, you know, um, pictures of our, you know, of our shows on there, links to our shows, but we also post very funny cat pictures of watching those guys, watching, you know, the screen that they could listen to us on. So, speaking of that, if you want to send us our, your uh, funny cat pictures, you can do that. You can go on our Gmail, those guys on the radio at gmail dot com, and send us your funny cat pictures or any animal listening to those guys looking at you know taking a picture of them looking at the computer screen or you know maybe the phone if you listen to us through the phone and just kind of just sitting there listening to those guys because animals love us apparently. Also, you can uh, Gmail us about any uh, advertising opportunities if you want to promote your legal product and your le- or your legal company with us. Please, you know, talk to us and we'll work something out. Or show suggestions, which you can do through our Tumblr or through our Gmail. Anything that I missed? What is your character really doing on the magnet train? What is my what? What is your character really doing on the magnet train? Food for thought. I, I don't, I don't know. Don't scare me like that. I don't know, man. Good, good, good. It's better you don't but, know. So yeah, so thank you guys for listening in. We will be doing some more shows in, you know, Pokemon shows it's in the future. It's better than obviously. none of you know. Also, I almost forgot to mention our newest account, our Instagram, which is just you know slash those guys on the radio, where we post our you know pictures of our newest episodes. So yes. Totally like us uh, on Instagram or follow us. Whatever Good that you know about that. Yeah. I'm going to play yeah. us out, you, 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 you freaking fetish. I don't know, man. I love you. I don't know. <laughs>